Okay, so once again we find ourselves here in Kali Linux and today I'm going to do something a bit different with you. Today I'm going to actually perform a DOS attack, a demo of a DOS attack should I say. Now since we can't actually just go and DOS random sites, primarily because we don't have a permission to do so and that's illegal, you do have an option of course to set up your own virtual environment and then you can do whatever you want to it, doesn't matter, it's yours. Or you can use a pre-existing web server which you can actually practice a DOS attack on. Now this pre-existing pre web server is actually your own home router. Your home routers, they do have web servers. Uh, you can access their interfaces via port 80. Pretty much all the ones that I know, unless it's disabled by default by your ISP provider or something of a kind. I don't know, but they usually leave the port 80 open so the additional corrections and modifications can be made on demand anyway uh, you can act if the router is yours you can pretty much do whatever you want to it and today I will actually use that particular web server on my home router which I'm using for this pen testing exercise in order to practice this sort of an attack on to demonstrate it actually anyway in the very beginning, I have spoke I have spoken a little bit about DOS attacks. I've explained what DOS is and what DDoS is. But in addition to those two, you also have two subcategories for each of them. You have logical attacks and brute forcing attacks. Now logic basically relies on logic errors on the other side, on the web server on the other side, and in a way it handles requests. So there were some problems with Apache where it just kept on stacking requests, uh, incomplete requests, and waiting for responses on end. Uh, it was pretty easy to DOS that. That's like <laughs> just uh, keep on sending requests, and you didn't need a lot of bandwidth to crash a site. But that was back in the days. Today, uh, they've fixed a lot of things, but you know, no system is perfect, and no matter how hard you try and how much you invest yourself and how much capital you invest into it, there will always be something to exploit. It's completely impossible to make the system uh, foolproof against anything, against a DOS attack. Of course, uh, the big companies like Google or Facebook or Twitter or something of a kind, their servers are simply too big to DOS. You would, you would literally require, I don't know how many machines and how much bandwidth in order to DOS it, which is pretty good because my Gmail account, I can always access it. It's always <laughs> readily available and it never goes down. Fantastic way there. But if you do remember, I don't know when was it, like a year or two ago, uh, they actually managed to DOS a PayPal site, which is pretty bad. I'm not sure how they managed to do that. They must. They probably did have a large amount of computers in the background, uh, basically zombies hijacked computers which were generating a lot of requests and then eventually the site go down went down but don't 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 hold my word to it you can feel free to scream in the discussions that it wasn't so or something of a kind because I'm not that familiar with the event I just wanted to uh, give an example basically what I'm trying to say is that if you have sufficient bandwidth either your own bandwidth or bandwidth combined with other machines, you will be able to perform meaningful DOS attacks on website, brute force attacks on websites. If you don't have enough bandwidth, uh, brute forcing won't do you much good. I can see a question forming in the discussions, uh, how much bandwidth would I need to do this or to do that? The, I really don't know. It depends on how much the server on the other side can handle. If you know how much a server on the other side can handle, then you can do estimates how many request, how much speed does it have, how much bandwidth does it have, and then you can turn, and then you can represent that in terms of amounts of requests, and then you can see how many requests can you generate to perform a meaningful DOS attack. For example, you don't need to. For example, I don't know. I've seen actually partial DOS attacks. For example, I don't know, let's let's just take a fictive example for this. A site can handle 10,000 users and you've managed to, you can actually generate sufficient traffic to occupy bandwidth for 5,000 users. And if the site has average login users, I don't know, six or 7,000, 
that means that one to two thousand users won't be able to access that site because of your DOS attack, while five thousand will be able. So those are those are kind of a partial attacks. I'm not sure how useful that is, but feel free to check that out as well. Uh, what we want to achieve is a full DOS attack, where and to do, have, have no doubt today what we are doing is definitely a brute forcing method. This is not a logic. This is not a logic thing or something of a kind, although it can be interpreted as such. But we're just uh, flooding it with requests in a very short amount of time. And since it's our own router here at home, we have the ability to send a ton load of requests in a very short amount of time with relative ease. Now, for this purpose today, you won't actually need to install anything. Rather, instead, we're going to be using a built-in, well, not a built-in tool, but rather instead a tool that comes pre-installed. It's called HPing3. It used to be called just HPing, but now it's HPing3. And let's just take a look at the help menu to see what sort of options do we have here. We will be using the SYN flag, so we'll be doing the SYN flood. Uh, you also have all of these other things. Uh, feel free to check these flags out. You can flood the server with m all sorts of requests. That's one of the bright sides. That's one of the good things about this tool that you can... Okay, if one... If one flood doesn't work, try another. If that one doesn't work, okay, try another. Something is bound to work. Uh, not because the web servers are poorly built or something of a kind. Rather, instead, a lot of the time, people just don't have the sufficient capital or or something of a kind to invest into the security because, you know, a security expert for a web server, somebody to fend off attacks and to uh, tighten down security, that costs a lot of money. So... Yeah, not everybody is going to be willing to invest, and a lot of a lot of minor sites. Unfortunately, I've seen I've seen it. It's pretty sad uh, that people are that competition is actually paying to I don't know take down uh, their competitive site during Christmas or during some holidays or something of a kind. Yeah, that's that's definitely not a good thing, and. I strongly urge everybody who is watching this tutorial, and I do recommend it, and I do say it, and so on and so forth. Do not DOS attack. Do not perform DOS attacks on websites. You do not have permission to. You can get some serious fines for performing such for performing DOS attacks on websites that you are not allowed to tamper with. Uh, just I know that I can get a bit tiring if I mention this from one tutorial. Uh, in between tutorials or something like that, but believe me, it is important. I would hate for anybody to get into trouble or anything like that. Anyway, as I said, we are going to flood it with sin flags. Which, uh, this is going to be a sin flood. We're going to pass a sin flag there, and up here we have the interval somewhere. Let me just see where it is. Excellent. So it's dash i for interval. It's a. This is the format. So you just type in dash i, then u, and then the amount of microseconds for that interval, how long will be that interval. You definitely want to, if it can be shorter, of course, sure, put it, uh, see what, see what you can, see what can, see what can work, because, I don't know, some servers will, if they see too many requests in too short of an interval, they will block you, but rest assured, you can route this through proxy chains, and if you route it through proxy chains or through a VPN or something like that, you can keep on rotating the IP addresses, so they continuously have to put bands on IP addresses and that's not uh, they can't put permanent bands on IP addresses because that's not a very smart thing to do as they will disable other people when those IP addresses are reassigned from accessing their site rather instead uh, IP addresses will get locked out for a couple of days or something like that and then you will need to change it or something of a kind but if we just go down below clear the screen and there we go so HPing there we go. Here is the time interval. Here is the sin flag, and here you can set. Is here you can even tune the port, and then you type in the IP address. You do need the IP address. I have shown you all how you can get the IP addresses from domain names, and I've shown you all how to get a IP address of your default gateway. Just type in route. Well, let me just show it to you one more time, just in case. Route, and here you can get the IP address of your default gateway, which will be your router that shouldn't be a problem to acquire. Anyway, go ahead and clear the screen. Uh, go back to this command. If you've typed it in, excellent. So you have hping3 space dash i space uh, u100 space dash s space dash p 
and then space and IP address. Very simple there. No no complex things, nothing of a kind, although this does support some sort of regular expressions. And you can type in, uh, you can combine this with bash scripts and type in something extremely complex here, which is not something you really need. The main thing you would really need is for it to jump from one IP address to another or to flood different servers at a time. So for example, you're dosing one server, I don't know, from three to five, and then from five to seven, you're dosing another server. So those are also some tricks that you can have. I decided not to show it here. You can find it online if you wish how to switch it. But the reason why I didn't show it here, how to switch from one server to the other, it is highly unlikely. I mean, I cannot explain to you how unlikely is it that you will have enough bandwidth uh, to actually perform this. And if you do need to switch from one server to, I mean, because these attacks, they don't work straight away. You do need to wait for a while for it to take effect. I will show this to you. Here, let me just um, open up my Windows machine and I'm going to open up an ex Explorer. It doesn't really matter which browser you use. This is going to work universally. Uh, so 192.168.1.1. This is my router web server site, so it's prompting me to log in with my username and password, and if I say cancel, it's going to throw me here. It says protected object. The object on the ROM page or server is protected, and I can't access it. But doesn't matter. I can't access the interior, but I can still access the site. It still prompts me for a login, which means that the site is functional. I can log in, no problems. There's no need to log in now, so I just won't, but doesn't really matter. You, you know, Your own home routers, feel free to log in and then perform a DOS attack. It's going to work in exactly the same way. Now I'm doing this in LAN, but this attack is, as I said, viable on the internet as well, over the internet as well, no problems. Now that we have proved that this site is functional, let's just, continue, let's just start the flood. And you can see the flood is uh, in progress. The DOS attack is in progress. And if I go back to the Windows 8.1 machine, uh, spoiler, this is still not going to work, so if I reload, it's going to prompt me for a username and password. we got to wait, we got to give it a minute or two or something of a kind for it to, act, for the attack to actually take effect. Let me just open up Firefox on my physical machine as well. It's like 192.168.1.1. Excellent, so I am prompted with a username and a password here, and you can see even in our local area network we still have to wait imagine if this was over the net or something of a kind uh take way longer you can see how fast the requests are being generated it's just transmitting one after another one after another one after another the intervals are ridiculously short and it should start working any moment now let me just try refreshing the site no it doesn't Okay, so I'm just going to call the tutorial here. I'm going to let it run for a while, and then I am going to come back. I'm not going to change anything. If I do, I will let you know. But all that I'm doing is cutting the tutorial here. I'm going to let it run for a while, and then I'll come back just to show you that you can no longer access the site, that you can no longer get this error message, that you can no longer get the login, that you will no longer be able to log in or, any, or do anything of a kind. Okay, so it is already saying it's waiting, so let's just see, do I need to... I, yep, I do need to actually cut the tutorial, just not to bore you while this is running. Anyway, I'll see you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll see what happened. So, uh, here I am, back in my... back in... well, not back in my virtual machine, back at, to my physical machine, but my virtual machine is here, let me just unlock it. I've allowed it to run for like 15-20 minutes, and I've realized what the problem was, why it didn't actually perform a DOS attack. It did. It did. But, take into consideration that this is a virtual machine, and its resources are limited. So when I'm recording, my physical machine pretty much prevents this DOS attack while I'm recording, because I take up a lot of resources, and you can... Actually, let me just uh, show you this here. Excellent. So you see that the VLC that I am using to record is using 222%, whilst VirtualBox is using 84, 86. 
and when I am not recording, VirtualBox will be using, will usually be around 140 if I'm doing something serious or something of a kind. And just to show you, uh, problem. you see it says I have went to 192.168.1.1, it says problem loading page, so the connection was reset, you won't be able to actually access it. But since I am recording now and my resources are reallocated, if I reload this, you see there is still a problem with reloading. Am I connected? Oops, not that one. Let me just see if I am connected. So ping google.com. Oh, actually, I've, been, I've allowed it to run for so long, I've blocked pretty much everything out, which is a bit awkward. Uh, let me just go back to Kali and stop this. Come on. Any time now. It says 63% packet loss. Okay, not bad, considering that I've pretty much overwhelmed it. So it was unable to load the site, but now I'm just going to disconnect. And come on. Now reconnect. Please. Excellent, so you've managed to disconnect. And connect again. There we go. Let's try it again. Okay, so it is prompting me for a username and a password, so it does work. Look, basic logic behind what I did, uh, what I can't actually show you directly now, is, as I said before, while this attack is running, if I'm recording, there simply isn't enough resources on my computer to actually perform both and physical machine will always uh, priority will always be the priority. If you run this and you're not recording or doing anything else in the background, it will work. It will actually DOS your router, as you see. It says uh, problem loading site because when I started recording, I saw that it loaded it, and when I stopped recording, I saw that it actually didn't load it. So there is a there is a difference because VLC for recording uses quite a bit of resources, especially processor, uh, especially CPU time. Anyway, this was one example. I strongly encourage you to try it out on your own. So you see, this is the command that I have used. It works on my router. See if it works on yours. You can also set up a server of your own if you wish, uh, either on a Windows machine or a Linux machine or whatever. These things are absolutely free. Uh, if you need help there, please uh, feel free to contact me in the discussions, post a question or something of a kind. I'll be more than happy to help you. One key note that I would like to make at the end of this tutorial is that you shouldn't just message me directly. Rather, instead, just post it in the discussion section, and there the discussion can continue, and I can answer it as well, and other people can see what you have asked. So if they've encountered the same problem, they can see the, the possible solutions. They can say, for example, oh, I've tried this, that, that didn't work. And then I can immediately give them a third or fourth solution, which is more likely to work. Anyway, as I said, try this attack. Uh, you'll see that it most likely will work depending on your router. I don't know if you have some sort of a Cisco router or Juniper router or something like that, high tech. Uh, maybe it won't work, but since you're in LAN, I'm pretty sure that it will, primarily because you can you have a lot of bandwidth to flood it with. Anyway, I bid you all farewell, and I hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial.